I want to explore sleep and muscle growth. Majority of our clients are that gen pop in which awesome programming provided by Train Heroic, shout out, uh, muscle building programs, uh, business professionals that have garage gyms that follow this. So it's sleep is one thing and we've communicated health. Now, how about just being one badass dude who's jacked as all hell? So what's the connection between sleep and hormones that we can motivate the rest of the people that don't care about health, but just how they look in the mirror? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, to touch upon that a little bit, you know, you know so during like deep sleep, you know, which happens like more so in the beginning part of the night, you know, that's where we produce a lot of, you know, HGH or like growth hormones where, you know, that's when our muscles are repaired, tissues getting repaired, the muscles are growing. And, you know, I've talked to like some athletes and people and actually when she was like an Olympian, she was like, her trainer was like, okay, you're training like on the track, but the real training recovery happens like when you sleep. So like, make sure that you're getting enough of this because um, if you're not, then you're not going to be, your muscles will not be as strong and not be obviously, as we know, like performing as well. So I think there is obviously a very like close tie to like the sleep that you're getting, um, especially like the deeper rest that you're getting deep sleep and your ability to like produce those, you know, growth hormones, like which a large majority have in like 60 to 75% of it is produced like during like, you know, sleep and deep sleep. So I think for a lot of people, like they miss out on that and think like, you know, I'll just, you know, eat a bunch of food. I'll get four hours and I'll go back to like, you know, lifting or running, but sleep is like the most, one of the most important things to muscle growth and recovery. Well, you know, back in the day, uh, they used to sell GHB at the health food store and the bodybuilders I know used to take this and, uh, it was like a ninja blow dart. The problem is people started putting in people's drinks and there's a bunch of bad stuff went down, but that was like a huge bodybuilding supplement because these guys could basically just like ninja blow dart themselves. And, is it the same sleep though? Cause uh, they're getting knocked yeah, out versus it's like... extremely deep and it's restorative sleep. I mean, oh. it does something where it puts you in like a absolute kind of like rent or I forgot what the, the deep sleep, um, uh, like you almost bypass and go right into that. But it's the other sleep drugs that ambient right that just yeah you don't get the sleep benefits yeah. or am i wrong yeah that was uh i remember we had parsley on him talking about uh how the sleep drugs don't really even put you into a sleep they just kind of put you like very very lightly into something that could be quantified or people think is sleep yeah i think that's like something we see for a lot of people is like certain things that they think are helping them sleep well but actually aren't like alcohol for example like a lot of people like i guess as another myth buster is like oh isn't that Oh, like for no for just get knocked out. <laughs> like, have you ever gone out and had a whole bunch of drinks and thought you slept the best you've ever slept in a night? I don't. I don't think I've ever heard that. I, personally, I've experimented with this on more than one occasion. <laughs> I can never think after we went out and had a whole bunch of drinks. I got up the next morning. I'm like, man, that was a phenomenal sleep. Like, if anything, yeah. I'm like, man, I think I think alcohol is the worst sleep disruptor. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. And but for a lot of people, it's that sort of initial phase of like alcohol just helped me fall asleep. And like, it just knocked me out and got me into sleep. And like, now I'm like, oh, I wake up and yes, I might feel like crappy, but like, of course, like I, I slept, just fell asleep like pretty fast. Right. And I went into like, I don't even remember what happened, but like you mentioned, like you're dehydrated, you're you know, having all these little wake ups throughout the night and it's definitely not like great for sleep. What about, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to out anybody, but I know, uh, uh, you know, marijuana is big in professional sports, you know, the NFL still tests for it. Like there's a window of about a month. Uh, in the NFL where they do street drug testing. It's in the off season. So if you ever see in the NFL, a guy get popped for street drugs, they got a real fucking problem. Like to the point where like dudes knew exactly what the window was. They cleaned up. I don't know if it's uh, like that in the NBA, but is that something, and I'm not saying any NBAs to do it, but like how does, you know, potentially cannabis, marijuana, and some of those other CBD and whatnot, uh, how does that affect sleep? And more importantly, if you see, if we were to look at sleep studies, is it quantifiable that maybe it's a benefit or is it a hindrance or uh it's another one of those uh perception changes that, that's going on in terms of more more of the cbd uh stuff just in general um because if you take just pure recreational use out for a second because you enjoy it much like drinking or, or some other type of thing it, it's medicinal effects are more than proven at this point um, and uh, overall are more healthy than just constantly taking pills, for example. Uh, so, I'm in complete agreement, man. The, uh, yeah. the opiate problem in professional sports, I mean, I really believe, especially in uh, where I come from with playing football, that there's a direct relationship between the CT, the opiates, and guys killing themselves. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I actually had a guy call me yesterday, ex-player, uh, reached out to me and was like, hey, man, can I talk to you? And is going through all the same problems 
that I've seen too many times. And my first question is, did, how, did you take painkillers? Yeah. I used to pop them like breath mints, uh, yeah. you know, and even after he played and he's like, man, I couldn't like, if there was 20, I was going to take 20. If there was 50, I'd take 50. And now yeah. here he is a bunch of years later, having a ton of problems. And as I hear this stuff, uh, I'm like, man, like, I mean, if uh, cannabis or marijuana was a more viable option, I would push that in a heartbeat, but it's, uh, I mean, in terms of like, uh, I mean, sleep, you know, you always hear like, uh, you know, uh, you know, I smoked and it, went, and it put me right to sleep. I just have never looked at any of the sleep studies associated with it to see if like people are really hitting REM sleep and hitting through their sleep cycles and if it's a benefit. I think in terms of like actually smoking marijuana, obviously it's like the like THC that's kind of affecting like so REM sleep. So interestingly, like if you look at like people's like data when they are like, you know, smoking like the night before, like and also we don't look at day to day like changes in like REM sleep because it's more like good to look at baseline trends from baselines for looking at a lot of this data. But it's always like you know the REM sleep like over time always like drops like significantly. And, and you know obviously we've seen that in studies as well. But I think like some populations where they found it to be helpful is actually with people who have like PTSD or people like who are like in the military because like you know a lot of um, like what happens for them happens like during REM sleep where they're like really active, like they're, you know, all these things are going on, but because like when they smoke, like it's like suppressing that, then they aren't getting like that anxiety or like the things that happen from the PTSD. So in certain populations, it could help um, in, in those ways. And you know, we've actually had the you know, people like using Crescent Health who've like looked at things like marijuana and like CBD for sleep. And we can actually see like the changes over time when people are using these different habits or different supplements. And, you know, this one person, like he looked at it and like for him, like as an individual, it like helped him and all across the board, HRV, resting heart rate, you know, weight duration, all these different things. And it actually, he was doing like another like mini study with us, like in flow state and actually finding that taking the CBD and having it improve, like, you know, his like REM sleep over the course of a longer period of time actually helped him to focus more on things like that. So like from an individual basis, we've seen interesting things. And also from um, the research studies, there's like obviously research on how like marijuana and smoking that um, affects sleep. And I think the, the good point behind that is that as the stigma becomes reduced in this, that uh, you'll be able to have better insights, better what better research and maybe research that was sort of pushed aside from the past because it, it was, you know, like downplayed because of what it was being researched on. Uh, I think you, you get to see a lot. I mean, obviously we, we just talked about uh, in terms of pain and, and that kind of stuff, but you know, between sleep and then all the other things that could come from it, it's actually a really exciting time for that. And I think if, if you can shake old stigma, when this is just true of all things like this and just really focus on, on the benefits and some of the stuff that Josh and you have spoken on, I think that that is a really big window for opportunity for, for health and, 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 and things like that in general. But for this conversation, particularly what it could mean individually prescribed for sleep for people.